Hey guys, Tony Demore here from Demore Engineering. This is going to start off our uh, video series, and like I promised, we're going to keep it basic, start from the basics, work our way up. And the most basic form of electricity is direct current, DC. So we're going to talk about DC and the different terms that are used for DC electricity and some DC Ohm's law, and at the end, a couple applications just to see why it's useful. So direct current, we have uh, a couple different terms here, and we'll, I'll explain what these terms are. Of course, the one that we all know, voltage. Voltage is measured in volts. The symbol for it is capital V. And uh, voltage is named after a um, Italian physicist, Alessandro uh, Volta. Alessandro Volta, he was in the, he lived in the mid 1700s. Um, voltage is push, it's like a force. So imagine a, a conductor, a piece of copper has a bunch of electrons on it that are able to move about. That's why copper conducts electricity. And voltage is the push or the force on all these. You can think of it as like a tube of marbles. All these marbles are in there. The voltage is pushing on the marbles. They're not moving, it's just how hard are we pushing the marbles, okay? So that brings us to, to current. Current is amps or amperes. We usually just say amps. The symbol is a capital A, although in Ohm's Law you'll see it as a capital I sometimes. Um, Amps was named after a French mathematician, um, Andre Ampere, and initially it was called the current intensity. And when you say that in French, the words get switched around, and it's like intensity to current, so an I for intensity. And, and you know, when Ohm did his business in this whole situation, he worked on, of course, he used the I. But uh, that's why it's an I. So A is the system international symbol for it. Now like I said voltage is like the, all these marbles in a tube, the push, the current is how many marbles are like falling out of the tube. So push on them, they're going to move if there's no restriction in there. Which brings us to resistance. Resistance of course is ohms and the symbol is the uh, Greek omega symbol. And Ohm's is named after a German physicist, Georg Ohm, and he also lived in the late uh, 1700s. So now we'll talk about that tube again, okay? So voltage is pushing the marbles, the current is how many marbles are falling out, and the resistance is how reluctant are they to fall out of the tube? Like, you know, are they squeezed in there? If they're, if they're really hard to move, then it's high resistance. So you could see if there was no resistance, the marbles would just roll out of the tube by themselves and there'd be no voltage, but there'd be lots of current. Lots of marbles rolling out, don't have to push, they just roll out. If the tube is completely closed off at the end, then I got all this voltage pushing, no current. So that's how that relationship works. And of course, one more, power. And that's our favorite, watts. And uh, the symbol for that's a W, and it's named after a um, Scottish engineer, James Watt. He also lived in that same time period, capital W, for his name. The relationship of these things, the guy who did the resistance, Mr. Ohm, he, he also uh, put together the relationship for this stuff, and that's called Ohm's Law. And it's real nice and easy because it's all one, one, and one. One volt with one ohm of resistance will give you one amp of current. If I push on the marbles with one volt of force and there's one ohm of resistance in there, I'll get you know one marble out or one amp of current. So it's real nice. It's a lot more convenient than you know some of the other measurement things we have, like 5,280 feet to a mile, for example. So uh, write some Ohm's law stuff here. You can see what that looks like. So one of them is uh, a 
could say that could be an R for resistance, I for blah, blah. just to keep it straight, we're just going to say even better. We'll just do that. Volts over ohms equals amps. That's that's one of the formulas of Ohm's law, and you can arrange these in different ways and come up with all kinds of different formulas. Um, I'll give you a good practical application for this one. Let's say you have an LED and you want to light it up on your car. Well, LEDs are specced by how much current can flow through them. And a typical LED will say 10 milliamps. You'll notice there's no maximum voltage spec on them because that's not a factor for an LED. It's the amount of current that goes through it. How many marbles are running through there? You put too many through, it's going to burn up. So let's say we have an LED that is. Uh, got a 10 milliamp rating. 10 milliamps. So we'll draw a little circuit here. Here's our, uh, our battery, 12 volts, and we're going to need a resistor. We don't know what the value is, and that's going to go to our LED to ground and light up our LED. We need to figure out this resistor. We can't just hook the LED to 12 volts, it'll burn up. Now there is some special LEDs out there, they call them 12 volt LEDs. There's no such thing as a 12 volt LED. All it is is an LED that already has this resistor built in so that if you don't know any of this stuff, you can just buy it and hook it up. But you know, what fun is that? And what if you want to dim it or make it brighter or whatever? So you need this formula, we'll tell you this. So voltage over ohms is gonna give us amps. One thing to know about LEDs is there's a voltage drop across the LED. When you try to put current through there, it's going to lose some voltage. And that voltage, that'll be a spec that comes with the LED. It actually changes depending on color. Red, yellow, green or one thing, blue something else, white something else. So let's, let's pretend that our car has uh, 12 volts and our LED has two volts of drop here. So our volts is 12 minus two. Our ohms we don't know. We know we want 10 milliamps of current. All right, well, 12 minus 2 is 10. So 10 divided by something is 10 milliamps. Well, if you work this out, you'll see that 1,000 ohms. So there you go. You put a 1,000 ohm resistor here. And there you go. You'll have 10 milliamps of current. So that's a practical application for that one part of Ohm's Law. Let's do another one. We'll change the, uh, change the formula around. Some other uh, application of Ohm's Law for power. Let's say we want to find power. A couple different ways you can do that. You can have your, uh, your current squared times your resistance. You can have your voltage squared divided by your resistance. You can have your volts times your current. So depending on which, which ones you know and which ones you don't know, you can choose an appropriate formula. You can rearrange these even further into different things. But let's, um, let's do a practical application on this one. Let's pretend we have, you know, online, there was people asking about CCA and OFC, and I brought up, you know, OFC is not a good. So let's do an example. Um, we got a piece of one odd. If you look up one odd wire, the resistance of one odd wire is 0 0.1 milliohms per foot. And let's pretend that uh, it's 20 feet long. And let's also pretend that we're trying to put 500 amps through it. All right, so let's do this example. So we want to find out, let's find out how much power is going to be lost in this piece of odd gauge. So I'm going to pick a formula here that has the things we need. We know our uh, current and we know our resistance, so we're using this one here. So we're going to say 500 amps squared. 500 times 500 times our impedance. We have 20 feet of this, 
So this times 20 is 2 milliohms. We do the math on that. This would be 2, 5, 4 zeros and 2 milliohms. To bring it back, 3, 1, 2, 3, 200, no end up times 2, 500 watts. So in this piece of hot gauge, we put 500 amps through it, it's going to burn up 500 watts itself in the form of heat. 500 watts of heat are going to be in that cable. So if that's okay with you, then fine, run it. At some point, you will get so much of this that the cable will get hot and be dangerous. That's you know, definitely a factor. But what about voltage drop? You know, people like to talk about it like that. Well, how much, what's the voltage drop? You know, what am I going to drop in here? Well, we can choose another one of these formulas or rearrange one of them around and we could say uh, that the current times the resistance is going to equal the voltage. That would be, well we don't have that formula up here, but this is, this is another application of Ohm's law. So let's do that one real quick on this same cable and see what the voltage drop would be. We know we're losing 500 watts. How many volts are we dropping? Well, 500 amps times 2 milliohms, that's going to equal 1 volt. So on this cable, you're going to burn, you're going to lose a volt from one end to the next, and you're going to burn up 500 watts of power. So looking at and this is a realistic number, this is uh, uh, odd gauge copper, 100% copper. If we did CCA, and I have to be careful with CCA, is, uh, CCA comes in different flavors, there's 15%, there's 10%, and there's 5, I've even seen 5%. That means 5% copper, 95 aluminum. So let's use the 10% uh, one. A piece of 10% CCA is around 0 0.17 milliohms per foot. So with that one, we would have the same thing, 20 feet, 500 amps, same thing. So we, we do this formula here, 500 times 500 times 20 feet of that will be 3.4 milliohms. So now this times 3.4 is going to equal 7.4. 50 and let's just do it real quick. And this 0, 2, 10, 0, 5, 7, 850 watts. So if you're okay with that, fine. But you know what? If it's like almost half the price and it gives you, you need twice as much of it, like I don't really see the point. Um, but there you go, if you want to use CCA, you're going to lose an additional 350 watts on that run. What about voltage drop? Well, we'd have the same 500 amps and 3.4 here. 150 and 1.7 volts of drop. So. There you go for those two different cables. And there you go for some basic DC current math. Our next video, we're gonna talk about AC, and it's a lot more complex. There's more than just the four uh, things that we talked about today. And it's gonna get more interesting, hopefully. This gives a basic understanding of DC, and if there's any questions, leave them in the comments or uh, something like that. Maybe we'll have a Q&A or maybe I'll answer them in the next video, something like that. But thanks for watching. So at the end of these videos, I wanted to just add a little uh, homework problem that you can try to see if you know what's going on, see if you figured it out. So in our LED example, we had a 12 volt battery and we had a resistor and we had an LED going to ground. And we wanted to get 10 milliamps of current flowing through the LED this way. And we calculated that the voltage drop, or we read from the data sheet of the LED,
that the LED had a voltage drop of 2 volts. So we knew that there was uh, 10 volts going through here and that if we put a 1 kilo ohm resistor here, that that would give us 10 milliamps of current through our LED. So the homework problem is using the stuff we learned about Ohm's law, how much power is going through this resistor because there's actually when you spec a resistor there's two things you need to know about it. You need to know the resistance of it and how much power it can handle. So we already figured out that we need one kilo ohm of resistance. How big a resistor does it need to be power-wise for this circuit to work without burning up the resistor? That's your homework.